Israel's a bitch. Israel's a bitch. So evil. And an action that is to blame. Girl, what is you talking about? There is nobody else but Biden. So in the caption of your video, you call what Amy Chen is saying voter suppression. And let me tell you something. Somebody talking about their political beliefs is not voter suppression. Somebody criticizing the president or the government is not voter suppression. Somebody criticizing the political process is not fucking voter suppression. And if you do still think it is voter suppression, you in fact and the party you represent are weak. Because if criticism cannot be addressed, you have no standing. You have no authority and you garner no trust. But above all, the reason why it's not voter suppression is because at the end of the day, you and I will both walk into that voting booth and do as the fuck we please. No one is telling you what to do. People are simply voicing their frustrations with the party and the candidate. And by extension, you. And if you cannot address any of those criticisms, if you cannot address any of that dissatisfaction, you've then revealed yourself to be weak and ineffectual. You saying that criticism is voter suppression is very anti-democratic of you. I'm feeling very hateful this morning so i'm gonna address this i've been seeing one too many and i am so sorry but i've been seeing one too many white people especially white men come on this app and complain about the lack of third spaces stop complaining to us go and complain to your parents your parents were comfortable turning everything under the sun into a parking lot and building roads through every single person's neighborhood because they didn't want black and brown people around them they took away parks they took away swimming pools they took away whole neighborhoods and you benefited from that. You live comfortably in your white space. In fact, I feel like the only reason you're complaining about this now is because you can no longer afford to live in those spaces. So now you have to live with the people your parents drove you away from and they don't have third spaces either. And now you're like, oh, life sucks. Yeah, yeah, people have been saying that. If you paid attention to anyone other than yourselves, you would have noticed this for years. Parks didn't disappear overnight. People who are enslaved in the prison system of Alabama are suing the state. It's for a system called convict leasing where they have to work at fast food restaurants for next to nothing, pennies. And this system makes the state of Alabama $450 million annually. The state of Alabama is making millions, multi-millions of dollars, while the black people who are doing the labor are making next to nothing. What does that sound like? And guess what two companies are involved in this case? Burger King and McDonald's, our friend that's being boycotted right now. Now, I can't seem to unsee a certain parallel. It's the parallel between the African farmers that are being recruited and sent to Israel and the use of the black people who are enslaved in Alabama in order to work for these companies that are not doing too well. It seems like when these big money-making industries that are basically enforcing capitalism go on hard time, they seem to rely on the cheap labor of black people while exploiting black bodies. I don't know, I just, I feel like there's a parallel there. It's almost like slave labor never ended. It was just rebranded. And remember, all of our oppressions are connected. Until all of us are free, none of us are free. Alright, that's enough of that. I'm about to pass out. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. I'm a little late to the party. I have been very, very sick. Very much bedridden. But I don't care if they start selling that shit for two pennies a pop. Keep it up. Keep it up. This is, this is amazing. Seeing them have to resort to stuff like this. Seeing them lose like $12 billion in the course of like, what? It was like 11 days in? And like, I'm late. So like, I wonder how much it is now. They're not even on the BDS list. So it makes me wonder just how far we can get this to go. Because... I don't know about y'all, but I'm not just boycotting. Like, I'm done with a lot of these brands and corporations. Like, I'm through. Even before the genocide, like, Starbucks was always super anti-union, and the employees have been asking us to boycott forever. So it's not really that hard, especially because aren't, like, a lot of the, um, the, um, the ingredients leaking online anyway? 
If it's that serious, y'all, I promise you, you can go make it yourself. And don't pay these people no mind, okay? The, oh, you know, I don't know why y'all boycotting, you know, me not spending a couple dollars here or there. You not spending a couple dollars isn't gonna do nothing. It's not gonna do This is what it does, okay? So fuck them. This is what organizing does. This is what organizing gets you. This is what being pro-humanitarian gets you. This is what being anti-genocide gets you, because apparently that's up for debate for most of these goddamn weirdos, okay? I <coughs> power to the... <coughs> Power to the people. So what's your take? Society went down a very dark path by making commercials funny. 100% agree. Funny commercials downfall of civilization. Absolutely. And why so? Because we've blurred the lines between what's real and what's not. Because as we look at social media, everybody's now primed to to like make them palatable to advertisers. So they're now fabricating a reality. That's why like Oscar Mayer Wieners is like tweeting out Ebonics. Literally. Like all these brands are talking to each other, dog. What is going on? Would you prefer for commercials to be boring? Yes. Like informative? Yes. Like an infomercial? Absolutely. It's just like, here's an Acura. You can drive it. Yes. You don't appreciate the entertainment yes. at all. I would like to buy things based on what they do. What about celebrities like Matthew McConaughey driving the Lincoln? Why? I don't know. Makes me want to buy a Lincoln. He's got money already. Don't do you believe that Matthew McConaughey drives a Lincoln? Absolutely not. But he makes me want to buy one. Look, man. <laughs> You got people watching the Super Bowl for the commercials. Right. So they can see a multiracial family eating Cheerios. I guess that's actually technically good for society. No. <laughs> see, this is the problem. We are now f clamoring for the right to be marketed to. That is our idea of liberation, to have s Cheerios sold to us as black people, as Middle Eastern people, as Asian people. Preach. What are we doing? I do agree that it's awful for society. Look, at there's ads all around us. Now look how excited we got as a society when Terry Crews was selling Old Spice. Terry Crews is tight. The commercials were hilarious. Yo! He was on a horse. But but that's the problem. That, that's the problem. My problem is that they're hilarious. <laughs> Do you wear Old Spice? Yes, to this day. It smells good. Well, this last week, I stumbled across a very loud up-and-coming fat activist who is using her platform on TikTok to call out fashion brands that she has deemed as performative in their size inclusivity. Her name is Samira and she has a lot to say. Now I have to admit, I do actually like the concept of her micro series because I do think it's a nice reminder to people that these fashion brands do make clothes like they're on whose line is it anyway. The sizes are made up and the fit doesn't matter. And in many of these videos, we see Samira coming back from these stores that she's deemed fat phobic with clothes that are a size medium or large, which would be below the size that she's shouting that she wants them to make, and they fit her the same way that she regularly wears clothes on her channel. And after watching all of these TikToks on Samira's channel, I am struggling to understand why she is so angry, right? It was a very angry introduction that I had to her, but it doesn't quite make sense. Did you know that only 60% of people paid that first student loan payment? And that's of the people who owed that first payment, not all of the people who have student loans. Only 60%. That's 9 million people almost that didn't pay that first payment. And I know you've heard about it by now, but I want you to think back. Did you see like a big organized mass movement that we're not going to pay our student loans? Probably not. Like you heard spatterings of conversation, but we didn't really see like a big organized like strike to not pay our student loans. And yet nine million people organically for whatever reason, whether it be that they're too expensive, whether that it's student loans or rent, whether that it's all that we just thought that was a very silly thing to do and they didn't need it for the last several years. So they certainly don't need it now. Nine million people were like, no, not gonna do that. That had consequences, not for us necessarily, but for them. They are scrambling to figure out what they're gonna do to get us to pay our student loans. I want you to know that we can apply that logic and that energy to other places and other spheres, especially if we add like maybe 2% of intentionality. Like, hey guys, we should do this on purpose. We could really make things shake. When they tell you things like, oh, you can't vote third party, that'll never work, there are not enough people, or oh, you can't just disrupt the entire healthcare system or the education system to get anything that resembles equality because like we're just not unified enough. Remember, almost 9 million people organically did not pay that first student loan payment and it's sending them in a tizzy. And we didn't plan that, not intentionally. Remember that, just remember what you're capable of. I'm an indigenous scholar in higher education. Of course, I'm gonna talk about settler colonialism despite being told not to. 
I'm an Indigenous scholar in higher education. Of course I'm going to be asked to be on a task force or a diversity committee more often than my white colleagues. I'm an Indigenous scholar in higher education. Of course I know most, if not all, of the other Indigenous scholars. We wrote a book together. I'm an Indigenous scholar in higher education. Of course I'm going to be called the name of another Indigenous scholar, even though we look nothing alike. I'm an Indigenous scholar in higher education. Of course I'm going to be the first and only Native person that someone has ever met in their life. <laughs> I'm an Indigenous scholar in higher education. And honestly, I look forward to supporting and celebrating the next generation of Indigenous students and their brilliance. Do you wanna be? We all heard of the Alabama Supreme Court ruling that gives personhood to frozen embryos, which completely shakes up the world of IVF and our understanding of a way forward. But the life altering Supreme Court cases don't stop there because why should we catch a break? In fact, on March 26, yes, March 26, the US Supreme Court started hearing a case from Texas and the fate of Mifepristone hangs in the balance. So if you didn't know, mifepristone is a safe and effective medication given for abortions and miscarriages. It's been given to millions of people since it was first approved by the FDA like 20 years ago. In fact, it's still commonly used in states that still allow for abortions, including Planned Parenthood health centers. But this case is threatening to change all of that by trying to get the FDA to reverse its initial approval of mifepristone. And if that works, not only will it devastate the landscape of sexual and reproductive health by ripping away a safe and private method of abortion, but it will completely upend the research process and medical approval process. If this works, it will upend and undermine decades of medical science searching for ways to make reproductive health care safer. But we can't sit around and just wait to see what happens. So instead, make sure that you and your friends and your friends, friends and your friends, friends, friends all sign the people's brief and tell the Supreme Court to protect this safe and effective medication. If you don't know, there is a also another ongoing genocide in India right now, in India and in uh, nearby Myanmar or Burma. And those are also two genocides against Muslims. Now, what's significant about the one in India is that India's genocide against Muslims has gotten and does get celebrity support. The Badri Mosque in India was, two years ago, demolished and a temple was just built over it. And there were many, many celebrities showing up, showing out, and giving support to this temple into this religious center that was built on top of the ruins of a of one of the oldest mosques in civilization. Um, I bring up this point just to let you guys know that celebrity awareness and celebrity accountability needs to be a thing, and I'm the first to admit I need to do better about it too. If we kicked out every able-bodied person out of this country, then who would use the probate courts to Steal disabled people's money. Wait, that, that oh, that's not... Oh, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> so while Palestinians are starving and babies are losing their lives over the cold and women are having miscarriages from hunger, the Israeli forces took over a home and turned it into a pizzeria and named it Han Yunus Pizza to make fun of it. I don't feel like I belong here. Where? This country. Why? Well, I'm a minority. So? Imagine if you walked outside and nobody looked like you. I'd wonder, why am I here? It's too bleak to think about. So I'd wonder, do they want me here? Some of them, yes. And the others? Only when you're of service. What, my humanity's contingent on me being productive? Yes. I'd work hard. And some of them still won't like you. How do you know? They'll make it millions. They'll create systems and institutions to remind you. Why? It's too bleak to think about. Then for self-preservation, I'd have to assimilate. By wiping away your cultural identity. Yeah? Congrats, you'll be tolerated. I want to be more than just tolerated. Is Santa bringing it? What about where I came from? Yeah. Reverend looks like me. You won't belong there either. Why? You gave up your culture, remember? I'm perpetually homesick. In your own home. 
I'd be an easy. That's why. The president before Benjamin Netanyahu was Isaac Rabin, who was assassinated. And to understand why, you have to understand something called the Oslo Accords. The first Oslo Accord, also known as Oslo I, was signed on September 13, 1993. The agreement between the Israeli and Palestinian leadership saw each side recognize the other for the first time. Both sides also pledged to end their decades-long conflict. A second accord called Oslo II was signed in on September 1995. This is how the West Bank was supposed to be divvied up. And as you can tell, Israel ends up with more space. Every time I try to talk about the details of the assassination, I get heavily suppressed. So I'm not going to tell you about that, but I will tell you this. In the weeks before the assassination, Netanyahu, then head of the opposition, attended a right-wing political rally in Jerusalem where protesters branded Rabin a traitor, a murderer, and a Nazi for signing a peace agreement with the Palestinians earlier that year. Nelson Mandela said the people of South Africa would never forget that Israel supported apartheid. And why did Israel support apartheid? Because it's also an apartheid state. And who's Israel's best best friend who's supporting their apartheid regime right now? The United States of America. And they have their own apartheid regime, they just called it something else, Jim Crow. And what's just one of the many ways that they continue to perpetuate that system of oppression today? Mass incarceration and police brutality. And who trains America's police force? The Israeli military. And this week in the news, we're hearing about hundreds of unmarked graves found outside of a jail in Mississippi. And that reminded me of Israel's other best best friend, Canada, and the hundreds of unmarked graves of indigenous children found at residential schools. Residential schools being just one of the many genocidal policies Canada used against indigenous people. Those very same policies that inspired the apartheid in South Africa in the first place. And that brings us to today, how Canada, America, and Israel are teaming up to slam and now free South Africa for bringing a case of genocide against Israel at the International Court of Justice. This presentation took me 15 minutes to make and I could make 500 more just like it because it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's just one of the many ways our oppression is all connected. And that's why our liberation is also all connected because we have the same oppressors of white supremacy and colonialism. I can't believe we just get up every day and go to our little jobs like things are normal. Multiple mass unalivings across the country. Some of them are our fault. Our tax dollars support them. Nobody asks me what I want my tax money to go to. It's illegal for me to not have health insurance, but it's not illegal for the health insurance companies to not fulfill their end of the deal and actually provide you with goddamn health insurance. The president is a really bad guy. A really bad guy. And then people keep trying to bully us to vote for him again later this year. Because they're like, well, the other guy's a badder guy. I don't want a bad guy. Can we just get a good guy? God damn it. If we pinky promise to be on our best behavior, you think they'll let us skip the election and not have a president? I'm dying. Climate change is coming out as hot and heavy. The earth wants us off this bitch. But I'm still clocking in on time every day. No one can afford a house, but there are multiple houses sitting empty across the country. Keep building cop cities in some of the most racist, worst places in this country while they think we're not looking. I'm dying. Israeli, okay? I can't just go into people's homes and then pretend like it's my home too.
20,000 dogs instead of people had been killed so far in Palestine, the entire United States would be up in arms and ready to stop the attacks on Gaza. But we won't talk about that. Mm. You know, black people- No, no. I'm just letting you guys know as somebody who works in a hospital, um, COVID is getting really bad. Really, really, really bad. Um, I think I saw a statistic that said that next week, We'll peak at COVID cases at 2 million infections. Um, the building I'm at has five floors, third, fourth, and a lot of the ICU full of COVID patients. So uh, get yourself an N95, stay indoors if you can, test frequently, do not trust the numbers the government is giving you because they are not correct. I believe that um, if you look at wastewater uh, statistics and stuff like that, uh, that'll give you more accurate results for how many people are actually getting infected. So stay safe understand that wearing a mask not only protects you and others but it also shows solidarity for uh, the disabled people in your community please 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 mask up this shit is so serious please do if you're a black woman with locks i hope you feel beautiful today i don't care if you got starter locks i don't care if you've been locked since 1980 okay i hope you feel beautiful today because you're the standard since don't nobody else want to say it i'm gonna say it i hope you stop being afraid of your own success oh 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 i hope that you take the leap that you have been needing and wanting to take and you land in a whole bed of successful ventures and everything else. I hope it doesn't work out how you think it's supposed to work out because it's gonna work out 10, 20, 30 times better than you could have ever imagined in your brain. I hope you never burn your cookies ever again. Yeah, it's okay to have a little bit of crisp on the bottom, but I hope they never turn out too crispy to where you can only eat the top of it again. I hope that never happens to you again in your life. I hope the pair of sneakers that you've been looking for magically appears on your timeline somewhere and there is a sale for said sneakers. So you thought you was about to pay $150 for them. Now you only paying 90 or 80 or 70. So like I said,